Welcome to another edition of The Power of Words with me, your host, Kevin Treasure, author of The Power of Words, The Winner's Mentality. Our aim is to help people win in life through the power of their words. You are born to win. Welcome to another edition of The Power of Words, The Winner's Mentality with me, your host, Pastor Kevin Treasure, aka The Winner's Mentality, helping you win with your words and today we're going to be looking at the disciples we're going to be looking at the power of the holy spirit oh we need the holy spirit our holy spirit we just welcome you today the holy spirit is a person he's not an it he's not a wind he's not a dove amen he has attributes he's spoken like that but he is a person one day i'll do a teaching with many great teachings benny hinn and so many great men of god have spoken about the person of the holy spirit and as born again believers amen we have the privilege of having jesus on the inside amen we have him living with us walking with us we have the spirit of the living god the bible says the same spirit that raised up jesus from the dead is dwelling within us amen we have christ in us the hope of glory amen and where we go god's presence goes amen so we've got to be always aware amen that where we go we are carriers of god's presence amen when god's presence is there there's a difference there's changes chains are broken there's deliverance there's healing amen people are set free we have the power through our words amen to change destinies amen we to speak life into dead situations to speak wealth where there was poverty to speak healing where there's pain amen to speak restoration amen where there was just total brokenness we have authority our words have authority and there are people that didn't recognize the authority it had but jesus has chose 12 ordinary men from different walks of life and the thing i love about jesus the bible says in corinthians the bible says not many noble not many rich not many wise are called but god calls the foolish things the the base things of this world he, he chooses the nobodies the nothings and then and he makes them a somebody he chose smelly fishermen a zealot he, he chose people that other people look down on he chose a tax collector nobody speaks to tax co- do you, at, at the sound of my voice is there anybody here that knows a tax collector i i personally i don't know a tax collector you might but i do not know anybody that works and if they do work in the tax office they have not told me <laughs> okay but he chose people that some people would frown upon not speak to or just look down upon but he chooses his people and then he takes them from where they are he turns them around and he makes them something special out of them and i want to say wherever you are god wants to do the same thing for you right where you are he wants to take you from where you are turn your life around fill you with his spirit and make something special out of you and man you are not ordinary if you're a believer in christ jesus you are not ordinary i'm going to say that again you are not ordinary there is a plan and a purpose for your life i tell people your eyes see your nose smell your mouth speaks your hands feel your feet walk your heart beats every part of your body plays a part amen every part of your body amen there is an assignment that means you are born for purpose there is purpose for you but unfortunately many people live and die and never discover the true purpose but listen to that will never be your portion you are going to fulfill every god ordained personal purpose there is for your life in the name of jesus i decree that you will finish strong in the name of jesus christ of nazareth so getting back to the disciples and when god chose jesus chose his 12 disciples and we know one of them was the devil but jesus chose these men to be with them i mean he said in the book of matthew he said he chose them might be with them and then he'd send them out it's so important there's a disciple that you're with the lord that you're spending time with him that is so important you've got to spend quality time with the lord so you can be effective amen so they spent three and a half years with the lord jesus christ and as you know then jesus suffered they saw him suffer a cruel humili- humiliating and devastating death by by crucifixion and one day i'll do a teaching on the crucifixion it's such a a slow painful death and they saw him go through this and and spat on him beaten buffeted him and they saw him whipped and then to hang on the cross between two thieves and die this excruciating death for me and for you but we know that on the third day he rose triumphantly amen and another he stayed with them another 40 days showing his disciples infallible proofs of who he was and he had to suffer the way he did seen of over 500 people and he instructed them to wait 
for the power from on high, instructing them to go and wait because he said, listen to me, I'm going to send you the comfort. He said, you're going to receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you are going to be a witness unto me. And he told them to wait and he was received up into heaven. And we know that in Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in the Acts chapter 2 verse 1 and 2. They were all of one one place in one accord. I heard my prophet Harry used to always say, God, the devil doesn't mind us all being together, but he does mind us being on one accord. You see, if we're all together, we come to church, but we're here, there, and we're not really unified. Listen, the devil doesn't mind that. Listen, we can come together all we want. But if he knows there's a set of people that come together and they're in one accord, he knows that we are unstoppable. The book of Genesis chapter 11, the Bible says the people of one and they were one language and they had a mind to build. And Mark, sorry, Genesis chapter 11 says, and God came down and he said, the people are one. And he said, now they have imagined to build this thing. And he said, and nothing can withhold them what they've imagined to do. So people don't understand the power of your imagination when you come together and you're unified and you're resolute about what you're going to do. You are unstoppable. And the Bible says, listen, let's confuse their language because God knows, listen, these, they, they're going to do it because they've set their mind to do it. He said, and now nothing. I'm gonna, let me, where, where is it? Where is it? Right there. Let me just find it right here in the word of God. I want to read it for you because it's so important that you need to understand that the power you have. Where are we at? Genesis chapter 11 here we go Genesis 11 verse 6 and the Lord said behold the people are one and they all have one language and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do you don't understand the power of your imagination when you make up your mind to do something the Bible says with God nothing shall be impossible all things are possible to him that believe this is what jesus said all things are possible to him that believe and these people believed that they could do it they were unified in what they were doing and god said listen i need to stop them and when i'm going to stop them i'm going to confound their language and he confounded their language as we know amen and the bible says he called it babel that's where we get the word babylon from this babel is confusion and the bible says on that same day of pentecost they all come together and they were endued from power from on high and God filled them with the same Holy Spirit they had given to Jesus to preach the gospel. Peter, a simple fisherman, transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, preached his first sermon. And 3,000 souls were added to the kingdom of God. When the law was given, 3,000 souls died. But when Pentecost came, 3,000 souls were saved. Amen. This is, we're living under the age of grace. Amen. And we've got to preach this gospel. This got good news, not bad news. We haven't got doom and gloom. Amen. We've got good news to give to people. And 3,000 people were saved. He preached again. Acts chapter 5 verse 4 Acts chapter 4 verse 4 and 5,000 people were saved the, the endurement of the power from on high the disciples it changed their speech when you are baptized with the Holy Ghost it will change the way you speak the way you walk the way you talk it changes everything about you the wisdom and the knowledge dispersed by the preaching of the gospel cut men's heart brought people to repentance and saw souls added to the kingdom of God the book of Acts shows us a pattern of the impact of the preaching of the gospel that these apostles had. They were disciples, they became apostles. The Bible says and in, verse, in Acts chapter 6-7, And the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem. That is Acts 6-7. And many believed in the Lord. Acts 9-42. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Acts 11-21. And a great multitude, both of Jews and also Greeks, believed. Acts 14, verse 1. I can go on. Last one. Many of them believed. Also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. Acts 17 12 so we see when people are baptized with the holy spirit amen there's a difference you will speak and listen god will speak for you amen men's hearts will be cut people come to the knowledge of the savior people will be saved households will be saved god is saying listen i want to baptize people with the holy ghost so you can affect your community you can affect your nation you can affect the world you can affect your generation i have this confession i've been born to affect my generation you ain't just born to be doing nothing listen these 11 men these 11 men turn the world upside down 
with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Of the same power that Jesus was filled in. And God wants to do the same thing in this generation. And in this generation, we've got millions of Christians all over the world. Why aren't we making an impact? We've got to be making an impact. And the only way we can make an impact with the power and the person of the Holy Ghost. So God says, listen to me. I want to baptize you with my spirit. Amen. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. I want to give you that boldness. In the book of Acts chapter 4, they beat them and told them not to speak anymore in that name. But they came together and he said God give us boldness and the place was shaken again and they were filled again with the Holy Spirit and the Bible says something different here and it says and they spake the word with boldness God is looking for bold Christians they're going to stand up for what they believe in the face of persecution I don't know if you're looking around and you look on the news you can see that everywhere that Christianity has been sidelined there's agendas that they're trying to push forward ungodly agendas that they're trying to push forward you know, so they're trying to sexualize a generation they're trying to push forward a false narrative and lies and listen to me deception is the order of the day and we are truly living in the last days and these are the days where we have to arise and men stand up for what we believe in because there are people that say satanic people demonic people evil people they're voicing their beliefs and their beliefs are evil and they're getting attention how much more we that are filled with the same spirit of god amen that have the good news should be standing up for what we believe and not being afraid or timid amen to preach the gospel and share the message of the cross amen of jesus christ of nazareth died and resurrected for me and for you how much more should we be standing up for righteousness how much more should we be speaking the truth i say to people do not be afraid fear is a spirit god has not given us your spirit of fear but power love and have a sound mind so god is saying i need my people to lift up their voice and to speak i've got here winners understand that when knowledge is dispersed lives are changed i'm going to say that again winners understand when knowledge is dispersed lives a change when we preach the word when we when we go out there and we speak god's word and we speak a message when a prophetic message and it's when it's healing where, where we speaking lives are changed i've got here the lips of the wise preserve knowledge proverbs 15 verse 7 the power of the holy spirit touched the lips of men that everywhere the disciples went lives were changed people were healed souls were saved they preached the gospel with power and did not back down in the face of adversity or persecution they kept right on doing exactly what god told them to do and this is what god is saying to many of us keep doing what i have told you to do regardless of the persecution persecution will come but god said i'll never leave you i'll never forsake you and there may be someone out there listening to me and he's saying you don't know what i'm going through i'm facing so much persecution god is saying i'm with you i'm with you rejoice in the persecution i'll never leave you i'll never forsake you listen to me i've got you god is saying continue to go forward you are making a difference the devil would not be fighting you if you weren't making a dent in his kingdom this is why the battle's raging this is why it seems like the attack is so intense you know why because you are making a difference amen you are empty in hell and you're full in heaven you are making a difference the devil ain't gonna make it run easy for you but you gotta know listen you have the greater one living inside of you the next one here winners must accept that they don't know everything oh my god i'm gonna say it again winners must accept that they do not know everything this is clearly seen in the book of acts chapter 18 there was a certain man named apollos and when he knew he was a what we know of him he was eloquent man well acquainted with the scriptures preached in a synagogue and taught the people fervently regarding the things of god but he only knew the baptism of john he was on fire for god he knew the word of god but his knowledge was limited the one john preached about had come and fulfilled his course and the bible says in acts 18 26 and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when aquila and priscilla heard them they took him and expounded unto them the way of god more perfectly acts 18 26 and we know by this apollos was a humble man this is seen because he took the counsel of the couple and went on to do mighty works being a great help to the church and when he was dispersed to pass through Acacia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, whom when he had come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and publicly showing them by scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Acts 18, 27, 28. Winners have to accept the fact that they don't know everything. Winners are humble people. Winners are willing to take instruction 
because they want to be more but they want to go forward they want to do even more exploits apollos was a man that wanted to do even more exploits and he changed his generation i've got here winners will always receive instruction that's so important as a winner winners will always receive instruction the right of proverbs says give instruction to a wise man and he'll be wiser still and a just man and he will increase learning proverbs 9 9 and we'll say that again give instruction to a wise man and he will yet be wiser teach a just man and he will increase in learning proverbs 9 9 i've got 10 points concerning wise words for winners winners will take what they know and share it with others i'm gonna say that again winners will take what they know and share it with others the lips of the righteous feed many but fools just die for want of wisdom proverbs 10 21 winners will always disperse wisdom i'm gonna say that again winners will always disperse wisdom the mouth of the just bring forth wisdom but the froward tongue shall be cut out proverbs 10 31 i've got here winners understand what is right and is acceptable i'm gonna say it again winners understand what is right and acceptable here for i will speak of excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right things proverbs 8 6 evil speaking is counted as a sin to those with a winner's mentality i'm say it again evil speaking is counted as a sin to those with a winner's mentality when you've got a winner's mentality listen evil speaking is it's not in your vocabulary for the mouth for the for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is abomination to my lips proverbs 8 7 when you've got a winner's mentality your mouth is always going to speak truth you're not going to speak lies you're not going to speak deceit or deception you're not going to speak fabrication you're going to speak truth amen wickedness will be an abomination to your lips the proverb says but next one it says you know a winner by what leaves his or her mouth i'm going to say it again you know a winner by what leaves his or her mouth i tell people all the time listen i i i will know you by what comes out of you what comes out of you tell me who you really are and then you'll know a winner by what comes out of his mouth in the lips of him that have understanding wisdom is found proverbs 10 13 in the lips of him that has understanding wisdom is found there are some people you listen to you're like wow this man's so wise concerning the prophetic or concerning computers or concerning science or concerning so much different subjects there are some people in their chosen field when you listen to them you can listen to them all day because they know so much about their chosen subject and remember you're when you're a winner and then you know a winner by what leaves his or her mouth so you've got to be careful amen you've got to be careful what you speak you know people amen you can discern who people are by what leaves their mouth i've got a next here kings honored joseph and daniel because of their winners mentality i'm gonna say again kings honored joseph and daniel because of their winners mentality pharaoh honored joseph amen the kings honored daniel why because they had the winners mentality they were wise men i've got here righteous lips are the delight of kings and they love him that speaks right proverbs 16 13 righteous lips are the delight of kings and they love him that speaks right so when you speak right great men will look for you great people will look for you people with affluence and influence will come looking for you searching for you speak to my company speak to my ministry speak to my business speak to my organization you've got wisdom i know that when you speak amen you'll change my my organization will change you you'll you'll affect their thinking and the way that they see things because of the way you expound on your subject matter we've got great mentors great coaches and when you listen to them you you after you've listened to them you leave revived you leave like you can change the world if you if you listen to some speakers you leave thinking oh my god I can change the world I, I was born to make a difference why because that person has impacted you because of the way that they've spoke and the way that they've spoke have made such a, an impact on your life you believe now you can do what you said you want to do amen that thing that was lacking in your life has now been revived why because you've heard from a person that has wisdom next one here winners are promoted when winners are promoted they remember their friends I'm going to say that again I love that one when winners are promoted they remember their friends then daniel requested of the king that that he set shadrach meshach and abednego over the affairs of the province of babylon 
that Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Daniel 2, 49. So you see, when Daniel got promoted, he said, listen, I'm not going to forget my friends. Listen, the Bible says, he that is wise, a wise man walks of wise men. And man, he that is wise walks of wise men. So Daniel said, listen to me, I'm going to get promoted, but I'm not going to forget my friends. May, when we get promoted, when winners get promoted, they will never forget their friends. When you've got a winner's mentality, you remember those who came up with you, amen. I've got here, winners put a high value on the wisdom that they hear. Oh, I love that one. Winners put a high value on the wisdom that they hear. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Oh, Proverbs 20 verse 15 winners will put a high value on the wisdom they hear when you hear some wisdom you gotta get your notebook get your notes and then get your computer out you gotta make sure you receive that wisdom and some nuggets that are dropped you gotta make sure you're okay i I need this oh that was a good one you gotta write these down they put a value on the wisdom they hear there's some people they go everywhere and they, they go to conferences and they hear good speaking and they don't just hear the word but they do the word it's not worth going to a conference and and you know you, you're just gonna you're just gonna go on in here and say that was good but you don't actually put to work what you've heard it's important to put to work what you hear that's so important don't just just hear and then go on and like okay let's pretend it never happened no when you go somewhere take notes and then when you go somewhere write it down put it in your book put it on your computer so you can go over it and go over it again and listen to it listen to it again so you can speak and speak again so you can make sure you go over the notes put it in your spirit because you know it impacted you and you know when you use what they've told you it's going to make a difference in your life winners put a high value on the wisdom that they hear i've got here two last two more winners know that even as a young person your wisdom can be an example to others oh i love that one winners know that even as a young person your wisdom can be an example to others timothy was a young pastor but paul instructed him let no man despise thy youth but be an example of the believers in word in conversation in charity in spirit in faith in purity first timothy 4 12 he was a young man but he said listen to me be an example there's some older people that are hanging about in the gambling houses and the strip clubs. They're in their forties, their fifties, sometimes some in their sixties. They're drunk, they get drunk, they they're going still in the pub. They're not setting example to anyone younger. But there's some young men that they, they start their own business in their twenties. There's some young men that are pastors. There's some young men they're doing some great things, charity work. They're doing things that are affecting the community. They they're teaching others. So it's not about your age. Age does not define wisdom. I'm going to say that again. <clears throat> age does not define wisdom. Amen. So he said to Timothy, listen, be an example. So even if you're a young person, you listen to this, you can still be an example to the believer. You can be an example. And you, these are the lists. He said, let no man despise you. Be an example in the word, in conversation, what you talk about. Be an example. Amen. Talk about good things. Don't talk about people, but talk about good things. In love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Be an example. As a young person, you can still be an example. And the last one here. Winners know. The old age does not automatically qualify for wisdom. Coming back to the same thing, and people may not like this, but it's so true. It says, winners know the old age does not automatically qualify you for wisdom. He said, I said, they should speak and multitudes of years should teach wisdom. Great men are not always wise. Neither do the aged understand judgment. Job 32 verse 7 and 9. He's saying great men are not always wise. They're not always wise. Neither do aged men understand judgment. I said it before. There's some young men that I know doing great things. Um, great feats. Gone to university. Doing a business. Got organizations. There's some young people that work here earning millions. And there's some older people and they're still like just doing nothing. Not setting an example. Not looking after their family. Not providing for their homes. Gambling. They, they've lost their way. <clears throat> not that I'm putting anyone down. But it's saying some people say, oh, you should listen to me because I'm older than you. Well, what are you doing to make me cause you to want to listen to you? What what way you live in your life that's going to influence me to make a change in my life? Because if you're older than me and you're doing things that I shouldn't be doing, I'm not going to really take you as a positive influence. So you've got to be careful. Of the people that are speaking in your life. And man, just because you're older than me, I just need to know exactly what are you doing? That are you going to make a positive impact on my life? There's people that have gone to prison and that's all they do. Go in and out of prison, in and out of prison. And then they still, well, hey, listen, I'm wiser than you. Well, you may teach me how to go to prison, but you're not going to teach me how to live a successful life. 
So aged men are not always wise. So listen, wisdom is the principal thing. God is saying, I want to give you wisdom. He said, I want to give you wisdom. The disciples had wisdom. When they spoke, things happened. These are the 10 points. Winner's mentality points of how you can disperse wisdom. God wants to give you wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. And in all that getting, get understanding. Disciples made a difference wherever they went. And God says, I want you to make a difference wherever I send you. So he said, ask of me, ask of me. He said, wisdom cries out in the streets. He said, wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom. So it's applicable. Get wisdom, the Bible says. But you've got a hunger and thirst after it. The disciples hunger and thirst after the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit fell and they made a difference wherever they go. We're still talking about them today. And there's some people that hunger and thirst after wisdom. And the wisdom that they have is making a difference in the business world, scientific world, in, in sports, in entertainment, whatever field that God has called you to. Get wisdom. Get wisdom and use your wisdom to encourage and disciple and help others to be the best that they can be. This has been me, Pastor Kevin Treasure, a.k.a. The Winner's Mentality, helping you win with your words. Thank you for tuning in to The Power of Words, The Winner's Mentality. Please remember to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review. Check out our website, kevintreasure.com. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. You are born to win.